Okay, you guys, so we're back with our model, or my client for the day. She's not a model for the day. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to just kind of go live. I'm, I'm new to this whole thing, but I want to use it to the best of my ability. To help you guys understand color better. You guys know I teach Color Decoded, which is a fundamentally based um, color educational program that teaches you how to formulate so that you can get predictable results, not just you know, surprise colors, magical colors, and it looks nice one time and you don't know how to go back and duplicate that or move up or move down, move sideways, move left, cool, warm, high or low. So this is our model. You can go back on the page and look at the before pictures. She came in for a retouch. Um, so I broke her base or lightened her base with um, a high lift 11 series with 20 volume, which she's a natural level about three and a half, four. Um, so that was going to give me four levels of lift, even though it's 20 volume, it still gives me four levels of lift. So now she's at about a six here in the base. It's a little warm, you can see. Um, this is previous lightened hair. We did not run the color through there because we're actually fin we're getting ready to um, color blend it and put some pop of new lightener in there. So this is about a, a six. We're looking at about an eight down here on the ends. She's a six back here, eight, two different colors. This happens when you do a touch up. That's why you have to know what to go do next. And that's always color blend. When I say color blend, means I'm gonna take a demi and 6.1.1 because I want to cool off the warmth. Six because I wanna bring this eight down to a six, marry these two colors together and cool them off. Okay? So that's gonna be my demi, which is right here. And then as I go through the top I'm gonna to go and just weave a few more pieces in why am I not balayaging I'm not balayaging because I'm also um, balancing her base at the same time so if I wasn't doing her base at the same time I could go in and actually balayage I'm old school I like things to be clean and neat so it takes me one or two steps longer because I'm a Virgo so I like a little perfection um, and so and I'm a paper girl so I like papers um, not foils because foils um, they are conductors of heat so they heat up the um, lightener or the color and it's unpredictable you don't know what's going to happen I like to be in control of my color um, so I like to use paper so that everything processes room temperature and it manufactures instructions so I'm going to go in let me just section her out really quick I'm probably just going to do my lighter pieces up in here not too much lightener. She already has lightener on, so I don't want to overuse it. I never got it. one second. I'll be right back. Now I've got my little secret sauce for my lightener. If you're not using Olaplex, check it out. It's going to help you um, help restore bonds and limit the amount of bonds broken when you're using lightener or something so aggressive. And I'm all about keeping the hair in great integrity. So that comes before any color service. So if the hair can't handle it, we don't do it. All right, so this is our lightener mixed with 20 volume, now mixed with Olaplex, so you know it's gonna bring it down a little bit, which is fine. I'd rather be in control than out of control. You see this is a cool base color. You can see it kind of turning bluish gray, which is perfect because the underlying pigment that's popping through is what? Orange. So we're gonna control that and bring it down a little bit. So I'm just gonna actually go and this is a demi, so I can go right on scalp. I don't have to worry about it getting hot roots.
and it's been about probably four months, five months since she's had color. So the reason why you want to rebalance is because color fades. They're in the sun, they shampoo their hair, certain styling products causes, you know, the color to fade one to two levels. And any tone you put in there, you can lose that too. So I just, I don't keep client records because I approach every application as a brand new service and I see where we're going, where we're moving forward to. And that's um, what I formulate for. Um, sometimes we could be going lighter, redder, golder, more copper. So I just found for me, keeping records wasn't necessary because it gave me a chance to reformulate. And I found out when I was reformulating and following these formulas, the levels and tones had changed, so they were not even matching, unless you color blend. And I color blend everybody, meaning I go back with a demi, whether it's the tone down or just even out, a shade or two. I don't color balance the light and I color balance to either add depth or tone or both. And because it's a demi, I can go right on her scalp. It's not going to lift or have hot roots. It's going to cool this hair down and add some depth into the ends, which are a little lighter. to this other side I like to do the perimeter first and go inside my last client of the night I said we're using a 6.1 or 6B, and this particular brand is um, Ash. The B doesn't stand for brown, it stands for blue. And so that's why it's important that you know your manufacturers, um, their color key. You know, most companies, their one is Ash, but some companies, is six, uh, it could be a 6A, it could be a 6.1, it could be a 6 slash 1 1, 6. 6.1, this company is a 6B, and 6.1, both of them are on the tube, and I'll share more about that with you later. Product I've been using, and I pushed it to the limits with all of my regular formulas, just converted, and I'm really pleased with it. Getting great, great coverage, beautiful coppers, beautiful reds, beautiful browns. You want to paint your color on as neatly as possible. Now that I have that part covered, I'm just going to go and start working it down. This is a demi, so I can move it down some. And then down here where it's a little lighter, I'm going to go in and drop that six right in there. Move some of that color down. So this is not a plan model. This is actually my client. So this is what I do in the salon. When I'm coloring hair. The retouch is one of the, um, like I said, one of the most difficult things to perform for people. They stay off shade and unbalanced because in school we were taught to sew cap and move forward trying to work out of one tube or one bottle of color. Once I realized it was just impossible, you see this is starting to cool off already. Mm -hmm. um, I, I at some point realized in my career after taking classes, it was impossible to use one tube of color. 
Um, we're at one, two, three now. One for the base. I'm sorry, two. And some lightener. That hair is already cooling off. Just fine. I said this is a demi, so it's it's moving really smooth through her hair. I can spread it. She doesn't have gray hair, so I don't have to worry about gray coverage. And I'm marrying these two levels, the six and this eight together with um, the ash toner. Because at level seven, six through eight, your underlying pigment um, is orange, which is great if you're going for your copper shades. But if you want a more cool, neutral result then you're going to counteract that with your ash at that level if I tried to cool her off with a 10.1 it would not work at a level 6 why because at a level 10 the ash used to control level 9s and 10 is not orange. I mean, it's not blue. Because at level 10, you don't pull orange. At level 10, you pull yellow. So you got to pick the appropriate um, toning shade for the level that you're at. So I could put a 9V or a 10V on here, and it really wouldn't cool it off because she's not at a 9 or a 10. She's at a 6. And our target is a 6 cool six okay so we have the perimeter done now I need a rag I always keep an extra towel to wipe my gloves off because now I'm going to do a little bit of technique work up in here so we have a lot, quite a bit of lightener in the front, so I don't want to, you know, put um, too much on here, but I'm going to start back here. And um, so we have like a triangle section out, and I'm going to just go straight across because one, what I'm going to do is, turn all this around, is... going to weave this out and you're going to see one of the techniques I do that helps me get stuff done quick so I'm going to go back to back so weave that out take my lightener Out of there, wipe my hands. The reason why I'm starting the back is because she has a lot of color already in the front, so I want to add some more dimension in the back. So I took a slice, but I'm gonna weave out of that slice. When I say back to back, I don't need to separate this. I'm going to marry that right in there and push it over there. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that later. See a little of the demi underneath there. That's how I marry my colors together. So take another slice, and I'm gonna weave off the top of that slice. Here. 
So by me weaving, it really doesn't show parts or sections. And then I'm gonna take and put this demi at my base. I'm gonna scoot this over to the side because I'm gonna go back and any ends that's left out is exposed. I'll cover all up at one time. And this section is a little wide, so I need to split it up. And it's the same section, just the other slice. Being that her head curves, this paper was not big enough to go around the curve. So this saves a little time when I can do them together like this. Now once this processes, the demi will be done. And I can rinse all of this out. And I need to do one last toner, which is a one, two, three, fourth application. You don't have to weave fast, you know, be can be particular. Uh, so I'm gonna go with the demi. Put it on my base. And kick that to the side so I can go back and marry all those ends together. Just push another more color over there. If it bleeds right into the base of the of the lightener, just fine with me because it prevents it from having a hot root. So by me having that base down there, it's gonna prevent it from having a hot root. If by some chance the lightener peaks outside of, of the, um, of the um, paper packet. So this is how my colors are all married together. Just knock it all out. I put the um, color on the shiny part. I put the matte side down and put the color on the shiny part. No need to fold it back like you do foils because if you lift it up and you need tension, not like this and you're laying the hair, you need to have tension down here and lay that hair right on that paper and you hold it, that tension, while you apply your color. And then you let it go and it's it's it's, it's um, stuck together. It's in place, it's not gonna move. You gotta have that tension. I'll fold this up and that root will get hit when I do that next section with the demi. Another half an inch section. Working my way up to the top. So this it gets a little wider up here, so let me weave out. I may take a little thicker. I want a little more in this area right here. Okay. So this part is going to be lightened. This is my demi. This will marry any piece that was in the packet at the root area. So I'll come back and marry those. Just put enough product so I can marry those ends together. Now this will be two separate packets. Tension. Uh, shiny side. There we go. So this little weave is a little thicker. You can at your own discretion. I said this makes your work unique. Nobody can copy this. I've had clients try to go get their work copied or my work copied and they came back with stripy hair so 
but my techniques are very um, fundamental because that's how I was trained and I like really clean work. The balayage is fine when it's necessary but because I'm color balancing her hair as well I, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable trying to balayage and color color balance. I could have just balanced the whole thing and went back and balayage. That would have took a lot more time when I can just marry these pieces together like this. Okay, we're getting to the front. Now in the front, I just may even take a slice right here. Instead of doing a weave, I may take a slice. Just so it's a little fuller here in the front. I think I'll do that. So I'm gonna take the Demi. Because I know I'm gonna marry this all together. Just going to make sure I have enough product on there to marry. And I'm doing a slice up here. Yeah, I'm doing a slice up here, but because this section is pretty wide, I'm going to um, break it in two. Oh, I keep going the wrong way. Break it in two. Apply the lightener. Just for a little more bold accent right right there in the top. Here's the other panel. More lightener. And stay away from the all the way to the edge of the paper. Go back and then you can kind of brush and move that up because the lightener can tend to swell sometime or clients move around. But don't leave that line. Go back and brush it out. Okay, we're to the front of the hairline, which is a little more sensitive hair. I never do lightener personally around the front of the face because when it grows out, it's such a huge demarcation. So I'm gonna take the very outer hairline and um, put the demi on there. That will tone it down and say as that grows out and she goes to put in a ponytail, it can hide the roots of her, um, her needing a, a retouch as fast. You got a tan, Leah? Mm-hmm. I can tell. <laughs> okay, so we married that down into the sides. And we're gonna work with this one last little section. So we have a slice here. Our poly Nate could take another little section here. Probably go a little thinner right here. And some demi. So you can see every hair on her head will have color on it processing at the same time. Because we're doing a color balance, bringing back one level and removing warmth at the same time. Weave that right there. Probably bring this back in there too. Color balancing at the same time and creating new dimension with a few more pieces of um, 
highlight. She hasn't been in like four or five months. So this is the time when you can go add new dimension versus trying to redo highlights every single time they get their base done. Sweeping this through. This is 20 volume, but it has some overflex in there. So that'll buffer it and protect the hair. And I'm going to take a little bit of that Demi and marry it right there. It's going to help buffer out that line. Okay, now we have all this hair that I was working with left out. I'm going to go through and just pull all the demi down. So I'm going to just move this up a little bit. Okay. So we'll start here. And as you can see, this has gone down a level and it's quite cool, which is what I want. So I'm just taking the rest of that. Marrying it down. Hold this stuff a little bit. Oops, um, that section. So that hair has some product on it. We'll just put a little more. And this is how you create new dimension. Color balance and tone at the same time. I put a little extra product up there so I can bring it down. You can already see where the product is at. It's toned down. So we're just going to run this. And guess what? If they're not exactly as dark as the rest, it'll still be a lot cooler. And it'll be some dimension that I, that I will use playing off the previous highlights. And people call me a lot saying, oh, this is what happened to my client's hair. And usually the number one problem, it wasn't the color. It was, it was one more added step needed that the stylist thought was just way too much. It was a lot of work. Color is a lot of work. And if you're going to do it, you got to be willing to do all the work and not stop. Some people would have retouched their hair and said, oh, it's not even. We're going to put... The typical band-aid in any uh, African-American salon. That's coming up nice and clean. I just want to straighten that up a little bit. The typical band-aid in any African-American salon is cellophane or direct dye pigment, which is probably the worst thing you can put to correct hair because it's the hardest thing to remove if your client wants to change colors. You got to get comfortable working with demis and permanents and artificial pigment because you can alter them. You can, those, those demis, I mean those um, direct dye pigments, the only way you can get them off is um, more lightener, which keeps blowing the cuticle up. So... Yeah, this is going to be nice and pretty. So I'm not going to go past a level six. 
it's not gonna get darker than a level six it's just gonna cool it off which is already obvious that this is cool and about two shades darker but which is why we put new dimension in so it's gonna make all that pop and marry together so when this processes she probably got about 15 minutes 10 15 minutes I'll watch it after this processes we'll shampoo it and I have a toner a quick toner I'm gonna use at the bowl because this hair will be at like a level 9 so I can't use a 6.1 to tone this hair I need to use something at level 9 which has a violet base it's actually actually um uh I'll get it <laughs> it's called frost I've been using this product I'm using this product, it's called Frost. It's, it's used to make pastels and mix with these um, vivid shades, but it's also a great toner. Just um, You can use at the bowl on gray hair or blonde hair, and um, that's what I'm going to use on her at the bowl for about five. As soon as I see it cool off, I'm going to rinse it off. And I'll share more about this with you later. So we're going to let this process, and we're going to come back and show you, uh, probably show you the toner, and then we'll come back and show you the finished result.